One of my regular rituals is logging into the New York Times, not necessarily to read the news, but to give my brain a little workout with their daily games. I greatly enjoy playing Wordle, where I try to guess the five letter word of the day, and Spelling Bee, that offers letters to scramble and re-scramble in many different word combinations. I was recently thrilled to see that there's a new game to add to the daily rotation called Connections. Connections gives you 16 different words that fit together in four groups of four. The object of the game is to group the words with their correct counterparts before you run out of guesses. The website instructs users to find groups of four items that share something in common. For example, bass, flounder, salmon, and trout would go together as types of fish. Or ant, drill, island, and opal go together because they all have the word fire in front of them. And if you're a connections person and were here last night when I spoke about the Mario movie, there was actually a Mario category yesterday, so New York Times knew what I would be speaking about. <laughs> Though sometimes they make it tricky by including words that can fit into more than one category, each puzzle is designed with exactly one solution. Spending time grouping items, names, and concepts into categories has prompted me to wonder, if one of those words was Jewish, what category would a modern game maker create? Jewish people have always struggled with defining ourselves in relation to those amongst who we live and in relation to the eras in which we live. As Reformed Jews, we embrace our existence in the modern world. We regularly grapple with how Jewish tradition is relevant for us as modern citizens. We ask significant questions about our identities. Are we a religion or a culture or an ethnicity? Are we all of the above? Are we American Jews or Jewish Americans? What is the connection between all Jewish people? Contemporary scholar and teacher Rabbi David Ellenson notes that Jewish people have been instructed to have a multifaceted approach to the world ever since we were created in the first book of the Torah. In Genesis chapter 15, God establishes a unique covenant with Abraham as the first monotheist. This covenant is particularistic, made just for us, setting out an eternal agreement between God and the Jewish people, promising that we Jews will always have a special relationship with God. Yet, Rabbi Ellenson points out, in Genesis chapter 9, God establishes a covenant with Noah, who is not Jewish, and all of his descendants symbolized by a rainbow. This is a universal agreement with all humanity, promising that God will never again destroy the world. Thus, Rabbi Ellenson states, Judaism is based on this idea of a dual covenant, both between God and all humanity and between God and the Jewish people specifically. It is truly a beautiful and important idea that as Jews, we believe in our connection with every person, whether or not they share our religion. We believe that the Jewish covenant and the human covenant are not mutually exclusive. And we believe that this duality of particular and universal is sacred. I firmly adhere to these concepts with all of my heart, and the universal covenant is foundational to my rabbinate. If I were writing this sermon a year ago, that's what it would be about. I would relate our tradition to the game of connections by saying that Jewish people would fit into categories like those who want to make the world a better place, those who use their values as bridges to the world, and those who strive for equality for all. Well, actually, connections wasn't a thing a year ago, so I would have had to figure out how to use Wordle. <laughs> but this year, of all the connections that I see, I am drawn to the particular relationship between the Jewish people and God, and between the Jewish people and the modern places in which they dwell. I've had to be because since last Yom Kippur, we've had swastikas in our backyard. In the past months, there have been tremendous local and national increases in anti-Semitism and bigotry. The Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, shared that in 2022, 
they recorded 3,697 anti-Semitic incidents throughout the United States, a 36% increase over incidents recorded in 2021, and the highest number on record since they began tracking anti-Semitism in 1979. Just in this holy season, our people around the country and just down the road have experienced unprecedented threats intended to make us panic just because we are Jews. In his book, Jews Don't Count, David Badiel comments on the distinctive way society views our people. He states that Jews are the only objects of racism who are imagined by the racists as both low and high status. Jews are stereotyped by the racists in all the same ways that other minorities are, as lying, thieving, dirty, vile, stinking, but also as moneyed, privileged, powerful, and secretly in control of the world. Jews are somehow both subhuman and humanity's secret masters. Badiel goes on to comment that Jews occupy a socio-cultural gray area. Though marginal, we are not thought of as marginalized. We are caught in a gray area of perception, viewed as underneath everyone else and at the apex of the pyramid at the same time. This makes it all the more important to be aware of how large parts of society view us. We are trapped in an unfortunate duality, perceived as symbols of vileness to symbols of power and everything in between. Here's a recent cultural example. Last year, the Academy of Motion Pictures, the organization that hosts the Oscars, opened a new museum in Hollywood dedicated to the history of the movie industry in America. At the opening gala of the museum, the spotlight was on the unique architecture of the space and exhibits about contemporary film directors, but nowhere was there any acknowledgement that Hollywood was built by Jewish people many of whom had fled their homes in Europe for a chance for a new start in a place where they were not discriminated against. Academy member Ryan Kavanaugh responded to the lack of Jewish people featured anywhere in the museum with this statement. As the grandson of Holocaust survivors, it's just shocking that they erased the contributions of a group who faced severe anti-Semitism. They couldn't get bank loans. They couldn't own homes in LA. And yet they still created this industry that is the bedrock of the LA economy and touches people around the world. Instead of look at what they were able to do, it's just wiped out. Yet in 2020, as the museum was being built, actor Kevin L. Walker tweeted, fact, Jewish people migrated to Hollywood, in quotes, founded and created it, milked black people for their culture and music, and catered to the KKK and racism in America. They deliberately created a social system putting black people at the bottom. Thus, the roles were mostly cast in. This gray area means that our identities as Jewish people who live in America in 2023 are constantly shifting. We do not quite fit into any category. If wider society were creating a game of connections and trying to put Jewish people into a specific group, some would put us in the category of minority, of underling, of low status, while some would say that we are controlling, rich, and perpetrators of the same ignorance and narrow-mindedness that are actually plaguing us. How can we do our part in healing the world when the world itself has not decided where we fit, let alone acknowledged us as partners in a constantly unfolding narrative? Here is my solution and my invitation. As a people that has a distinct relationship with God, it is incumbent upon us to lean into that distinctiveness. Okay. <laughs> All right, well. Here's my solution and my invitation. As a people that has a distinct relationship with God, it is incumbent upon us to lean into that distinctiveness. It is incumbent upon us to be public about our Judaism, using it to build bridges when others try to use it to tear us apart. 
It is incumbent upon us to be proud of our tradition, to be active members of the Jewish community, especially during these polarizing times. This year, let us live a more Jewish life in order to strengthen all of our connections with one another, with our world, and with God through living out our destiny as people striving to build a world of understanding and compassion. We still very much acknowledge that we live in America, we live in Jacksonville, Florida, and that part of an evolving liberal Jewish existence, meaning a Jewish existence that does not consider itself bound to ancient text as the word of God, is navigating how to balance our religious identity with our secular one. Yet we cannot allow our attempts to balance those identities to outweigh the fact that we are Jewish, even when it is a struggle to be Jewish in a wider non-Jewish world. Amiel Hirsch, a reform rabbi based in New York, published an article in 2021 in which he posited that the growing inclination among liberal Jews to de-emphasize Jewish distinctiveness is the gravest threat to the future of liberal Judaism. Rabbi Hirsch proclaims that to live a meaningful Jewish life as reformed Jews requires clarity of beliefs and strength of Jewish convictions. Jewish peoplehood speaks the language not only of peace, justice, righteousness, and mercy, but also the language of Jewish solidarity, responsibility, identity, and mutuality. This year, let us speak the language of Jewish solidarity, responsibility, identity, and mutuality. Let's lean into what our beautiful and rich religion can offer to the world and use the foundation and wisdom of our tradition to build understanding and relationship amongst diverse peoples. There may be many categories that we fall into as reformed Jews, as Jewish Americans, American Jews, as citizens of 2023. Categories that define us and connect us. Yet there is one thing that connects all Jewish people going back thousands of years, and that is Torah. So this year, let us think about what defines Torah for each of us, and how we can actively share that Torah with our communities. The Elohai Nitzor prayer, a very personal interaction between the individual and the eternal, asks God, Patach li bi b'Torah techa, open my heart to your Torah. I think that this prayer and this request specifically can inspire each of our expressions of Judaism in the coming year. Not only do Jewish people have a particular covenant with God, each of us is a part of that covenant. So this year, let us be open to Torah, and more specifically, the Torah that can only come from our individual hearts. Let's share the Torah of our hearts, not just when a swastika appears on a building, or our yards are littered with anti-Semitic leaflets, or fake bomb calls all over the country grab our attention. Let's share our Torah because we are proud of our beautiful religion because our rituals and our prayers and our values create meaning in our lives, because even during times in which it's frightening to be Jewish, we are following in the footsteps of our resilient and hopeful ancestors. Let us use the wisdom and values of our tradition to transform our community and the world into spaces that acknowledge Judaism and Jewish people as important partners, not in spite of our Judaism, but because of it. We will be making great efforts this year here at Temple to open our hearts to the Torah that connects us all and use that Torah as an expression of Jewish pride in order to interact with, learn from, and make moments of meaning in our world and create partnerships with others looking to do the same. We'll be bringing in three different scholars and residents for weekends of learning to discuss the important topics of LGBTQ awareness disability awareness, and racial awareness, all through Jewish lenses. We will create pop-up holidays at various spots in our city to publicize Judaism, normalize Jewish culture, and share learning experiences with those who are curious. We are actively forming a faith-based partnership with the Duval County School System to bring Torah into our classrooms and teach our younger citizens. We are participating in the second cohort of the Kulanu program run by the Anti-Defamation League, the ADL, 
which brings similar congregations together to learn about anti-Semitism and create educational experiences for our community to build awareness and understanding. We are strengthening our interfaith partnerships, along with our annual pulpit swap and longstanding relationship with Hendricks Avenue Baptist Church, I have been meeting and will continue to meet with various faith leaders in our city to build relationships and discuss collaboration. Rabbi Englander is scheduling field trips to different congregations for our students and experiences for our teens to bring our learners into the community and connect them with those of other religions and I continue these important conversations as a member of the One Jacks board. As I wrote in a letter to our Temple family after three people were killed in the dollar store just because of the color of their skin, hate is insidious. There are sadly too many examples we can name just this year, let alone in our history, of the poisonous effect hate can have in our efforts to see the divine in others and build the world we wish to see. When people view us as the lowest of the low, the scum of the earth, that is hate. When people see us as running everything and conspiring against the world, that is hate. When Jewish narratives disappear from history or Jews are not included in important efforts to repair the world, that is hate too. The antidote to hate is loving and being proud of our Judaism. The antidote to hate is learning, discussion, and growth. The antidote to hate is leaning into not only our people's distinct covenant with God, but the uniquely divine spark that each of us possesses within, that connects us individually with something greater than ourselves. And we fight hate by using the Torah of our hearts to provide insight and compassion in spaces in which there are none. Rather than being defined by traditional stereotypes, or told what groups we fall into, let us rely on our Torah. Let us use our own personal distinct Torah to inspire us to remember what we love about being Jewish. Let us use our own personal Torah to get involved in these new programs and opportunities for education and growth here at Temple. Let us use our own personal Torah to have confidence in our Jewish identities and to have pride in belonging to this incredible people resilient through the generations. Maybe the most authentic way to define ourselves is not to be grouped into one specific category like in the game of connections. Maybe the fact that we are all bound together by Torah while each of us follows the Torah of our hearts defines us, making us special and unique. We pray to God, Patach li bi betorah techa, open my heart to your Torah. By doing so, we bring positivity and strength to a world that tries to weaken us. How will you open your heart to tradition in the coming year? How will you connect in sacred partnership with your Jewish community and with the wider community? What is the Torah you want to learn about and share? Whatever the answers to these questions, may they help you form greater connections, making us even more versatile and compassionate as a people. Because though Torah connects us all, we as those who belong to multiple covenants, those who speak not only of peace, justice, righteousness, and mercy, but also of Jewish solidarity, responsibility, identity, and mutuality, we will always remain impossible to define.